Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Sean Seaman, the Wharf's project director. Good, good morning. Wow. My name is Sean Seaman. I'm the project director uh, for the Wharf. It's my distinct pleasure on behalf of all of us at Hoffman Madison Waterfront to welcome you to the Wharf. I'd like to thank the Children's Chorus of Washington and the students of the Duke Ellington School of the Arts for their wonderful performance, and also the Eastern High School Second Line Band. I'd like to extend a heartfelt thank you to the Joint Armed Forces Color Guard. We're honored to have you in our presence today, representing all the brave men and women of the nation's military. Thank you. And while we're, we're all gathered here today to celebrate the unveiling of Washington's beautiful new waterfront, there are many people continuing to struggle with the hurricanes in the south, also the last, last week's devastating attack in Las Vegas. With that, I'd like to take a moment just to bow our hands in a moment of silence for those struggling. Thank you. And with that, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Ward 6 Councilman Charles Allen to kick off the festivities. This is a great day for our city, am I right? Yes. This is fantastic. I am so honored to be here, and congratulations, Monty, to the entire team that has worked so hard. Um, Things like this don't come about just overnight. I was actually thinking back on this. Um, it was about 10 years ago, I think, is when I first met Monty Hoffman, Sean Seaman, and a lot of other folks that have been such an integral part of this. And they laid out the plan and the vision and the work they wanted to do, and they talked about the partnership with the city. They talked about the partnership with the Southwest neighborhood. And now looking at this 10 years later to see what we've accomplished together um, is just fantastic. I've said from the beginning, I think this is a project, this is a development, this is an opportunity that will help re-knit our city to our water. And in a way that has not been done before, our city is realizing more than ever that we are a city on the water. We are a city on the river, and that is a great, great thing. So I'm thrilled with that. Now, when I mention these, these things don't come about overnight, there's a lot of people, um, I know there's a lot of thank yous that are going to happen this morning. I want to single out a few people. Um, as the Ward 6 counselor myself, I can't claim credit for putting every brick in place. Um, but there are two of my predecessors that I actually want to recognize, um, because this has been a project that has been going on for a very long time here in Ward 6. Uh, my immediate predecessor, uh, Ward 6 Councilor Tommy Wells, uh, who did a phenomenal job of helping get this where it was. And before Tommy, our Ward 6 Councilor Sharon Ambrose, who passed away earlier this year, uh, was incredibly instrumental in a lot of the work taking place. And we just ask that we give a round of applause for their work, too. There's a lot of members of the council that have also been instrumental. Jack Evans from Ward 2, um, he's been phenomenal throughout all of this for a very long time. Our chairman, Phil Mendelson, who's been great. I saw uh, former chairman and council member Kwame Brown here, who was very instrumental as we went through a lot of this many years ago. And my other colleagues, Alyssa Silverman, Robert White, Brandon Todd, Vince Gray. So many people that have been a part of this from the city side. So thank you all so much for your hard work. And then, of course, a big thank you to the Southwest neighborhood. Uh, this is an exciting time to be in Southwest D.C. The secret is out. This is an amazing neighborhood. But I really appreciate the way that Monty and Sean and so many um, realized that for this to be successful, it had to be a strong part of the Southwest community. Um, ANC Chairman Andy Litsky, who has been instrumental in so many meetings, hundreds and hundreds of meetings, thousands of hours. Uh, I saw ANC Commissioner Ron Collins here, and I know I have other ANC commissioners here as well. The Southwest Neighborhood Assembly and so many other organizations that have worked so hard to make it so that this development, the businesses, the jobs that are created, the new housing, really fit into the fabric and the neighborhood that is our Southwest DC. This is an incredibly special place. 
this neighborhood and this, this little quadrant that could. And the wharf opening today is something that makes it even greater. And I'm so excited to be a part of it. Thrilled to help represent this neighborhood, to help represent this area. And to, to Monty, thank you very much. We also have a mayor and her team who have been fantastic. And I'm sure she'll say as well, of course, that this has spanned many years. But I have, uh, really appreciate, Mayor Bowser, all of your hard work as we drove towards this opening day, this launch and grand opening for the wharf. So congratulations to everybody. Thank you so much. And uh, welcome to our grand opening. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podium Monty Hoffman, founder and CEO of PNN Hoffman and managing director of the Wharf. <laughs> How about that God voice up there? That's pretty cool, huh? Monty Maybe God is a woman. Monty Hoffman, back on script, please. Oh, thank you. <laughs> So here we are, look at this, 42 months later, my God, and, every, and we have so many dignitaries today, I am deeply uh, humbled, um, everybody's here, who's running the city right now, I'm just, gonna... <laughs> everything's in control, that's good, that's good. Um, so we have a clock, which is only fitting since we had a clock out on Main Avenue, you guys can't see it, but each of us have a, our own time clock that I got to stay within, I guess that's poetic justice. Um, you know, this, uh, this whole development um, is really a team sport, and I have so many people to thank, including that helicopter pilot up there keeping us safe. Um, so many people uh, were involved, and I first want to mention um, Council Member Allen uh, for Ward 6. Your, your ward is just developing uh, at an incredible pace. I don't know how you keep up with it, but you've always been there. You've always been accessible to us. And I'm deeply grateful uh, for that. Um, Deputy Mayor uh, Brian Kanner, uh, him and his team, and you'll talk more about your team, I think, in a bit, so I won't uh, go into all that, but with the, uh, the departments of the city and, and with uh, Brian's leadership, uh, it's just an extraordinary uh, for us. Um, I'd like to recognize my partner, uh, Amer Hamor and Madison Marquette, and uh, I'll, I'll speak more to him uh, later. Um, and uh, Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton, she, from the very beginning, has been a stalwart supporter. And the whole, the whole reason that uh, this whole community is named the Wharf is because of her, you know, uh, because of her, her mentioning it, and we overruled all the marketing people that we paid a lot of money to uh, in any event. Uh, I want to mention... Um, Oh, and uh, of course, uh, Mayor Bowser here, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about her in a minute, but uh, I am so honored that you're with us, and you too have been just an incredible supporter for this community. Um, my partners, uh, Eleanor Bacon, who is uh, here, she's the one responsible for getting me involved in this to begin with, and uh, she, uh, it's her, actually it's her brother that'll be showing up later. Uh, Kevin Bacon uh, with the Bacon Brothers, so uh, that's a very cool connection. Uh, ben Soto is here, I saw him a little bit ago, and Curtis Williams, and uh, Michael Jones, and of course Jeff Griffiths uh, all here. Can we give them a round of applause, please? Um, I also want to uh, thank uh, all of our, our, our partner at PSP. We could not have asked for a better partner. They have a long-term vision. They have like a 40-year-plus vision here. So it is not a merchant-built structure to get in and get out. That allowed us to make quality decisions and put us in alignment with the city. And I think that was essential to make this uh, to the uh, level of quality that we all wanted at the outcome. And I can't thank uh, PSP enough. Could I have a round of applause for PSP? Um, I also have uh, thanks to, uh, we have several former mayors here today. Um, I did not see Anthony Williams, but if he's not here, I'm still going to give him a shout out because it was Anthony Williams' uh, vision um, long ago at uh, creating the Anacostia Waterfront Initiative and opening up our waterways for the development, not only here, but over at the yards and other places that we have today that we're all enjoying. Uh, we also are joined here by uh, former Mayor Fenty. Uh, it was him who, uh, when we first engaged here, that uh, helped us in terms of 
our formative years in uh, capturing all the site and a enabling us to have a truly world-class waterfront and also former mayor and current council member uh, Vincent Gray who was really essential in our execution of this plan uh, that we're all enjoying today. Um, I also want to thank uh, Bill Rogers, he's the CEO of SunTrust Bank, who is here with us today. Uh, Joe Carter, who is the Executive Vice President of Wells Fargo, and Ron Paul, who is the uh, CEO of Eagle Bank. Also uh, notice that uh, we have several council members here. I'd like to mention uh, Chairman Phil Mendelson is here, uh, Council Member uh, Mendelson, Council Member uh, Silverman, Council Member Robert White, Coun Council Member uh, Evans, Council Member uh, Todd, all here in support of this project. Could we give them all a big round of applause? Before I go on, I'm looking at these scrambled notes that I put together about an hour ago. We are going to have fireworks here in a little bit, so I just want everybody to be prepared. You're not used to seeing fireworks during the day, so a lot of banging going on. It's all orchestrated uh, with uh, uh, this uh, extensive event. Uh, so that'll be coming. I want to pay, pay special tribute to uh, who, uh, Stan Exit, who is a design genius here. And um, it, was his, it was his vision, really, of creating a waterfront that is not a lifestyle center, that is a little bit messy, that pulls the best from all over the world. And through him, we brought in uh, various experts and um, uh, others who could come in and help us uh, deliver what we are offering and uh, delivering today. I also want to mention uh, the contractors that we have here. Um, we have not, uh, so many contractors here to thank. Belfer Beatty, who's uh, building the Trophy Office building over here. Um, Whiting Turner, which is building Pier 4 uh, down that way uh, on the water. Donahoe Construction, who uh, built the uh, hotels uh, over here. We've also got uh, HP, uh, talking about retail contractors, HP and Forrester, uh, or hospitality partners, Forrester, WG, RAN, and of course Clark Construction. And I have to give a special shout out for Clark, in particular, Robbie Moser, Brian App, and Matt Haas. You guys are terrific. You stepped up when we needed it. Uh, you guys were working uh, nights and weekends. And I'd like to give a round of applause for all these contractors, please. Finally, uh, the men and women who worked here, uh, I, I, I have, we all owe such gratitude to. We had a couple thousand uh, workers here that we were averaging daily. Uh, many of these uh, went night shifts. Many of them pulled long hours to work here in the rain and uh, the hot sun. And uh, they, they just kept pouring it on all the way up until about 9 o'clock this morning, actually. So I am very grateful for all the construction workers. Um, And finally, I want to, um, I want to thank uh, Amir Hamor and Madison Marquette, our partners. Uh, they joined uh, us and this team. Uh, and we went forward together in 2010. And uh, I couldn't ask for a better partner. Uh, Amir has a long-term vision. That was always one of our guiding principles. Um, and uh, retail-oriented, uh, the company and a very collaborative, um, very collaborative uh, approach to things, and that was necessary because we had to be flexible. And before I get off the stage, I have one more person to thank, and that is my wife, Tracy Hoffman. So when we went through the, we, we went through the deep recession, she was there every step of the way, and she's here today, and uh, uh, probably my most successful partnership, I would say. Okay. So with that, I'd like to turn the uh, mic over to Amir Hamor, uh, the CEO and chairman, I should say, of Madison Marquette. Can we give him a big round of applause? Thank you, Monty, for these uh, very kind words. It is true, it's very hard to figure out who to thank. There are thousands of people who've made this project possible. Um, so first, I'd like to really welcome you all here, all the friends of the wharf who have joined us here, 
I want to especially thank Representative Norton, as well as uh, the city officials, Mayor Ma Muriel Browser, City Councilman Charles Allen, Deputy Mayor Brian Kenner, and all of our distinguished guests who are kind enough to brave the cold and the, and the rain, the possibility of rain, to join us here. Um, I want to pay tribute to our partners, first and foremost to Monty Hoffman and to the great uh, P.N. Hoffman team, without whom none of this is possible, a brilliant team that have really worked with us. Um, I also want to pay tribute to the Madison Marquette team, to many of, the, many of the team members who are with us here today. David Brennard, who negotiated the deal with Monty, and Peter, Peter Cole, our head of development. Sean Seaman, who as a project uh, leader, uh, really, uh, really took this straight through. Without him, without his broad shoulders, I don't think this, this project would have happened. And many, many others. I would like to recognize our investment partner, PSP. Frankly, without PSP, this project would not have been possible. In particular, I'd like to thank Neil Cunningham, Pierre Gibault, Chris Wojcicki, Lauren Shore, and all of the PSP team members who have really worked with us as a real partner, hand in hand, to shape this great development. Thank you. I'd like also to recognize my partners at Capital Guidance and our financial partner, Partners Group. All of them have shared our vision and believed in our ability to revitalize a mile-long waterfront uh, in the middle of the nation's capital. Thank you all for your confidence and collaboration. We're grateful that you can join us here today on this great opening day. As you all can already see, the wharf is going to be a transformative project, not only to the southwest waterfront, but to the whole city. Finally, the city of Washington has embraced this waterfront. Finally, there's a place for Washingtonians, for visitors, for tourists to come and enjoy water activities, for them to work, live, shop, dine, party, and experience music and culture. Around us, the whole area is changing. Museums are being built. The Spy Museum, the Bible Museum, the soccer stadium is being built, and many, many apartment buildings. Final people are living here again, Congresswoman Norton. And we're so proud that the wharf has anchored and made possible this revitalization of the best neighborhood in the center of the city. <laughs> to, to make, thank you, to make this destination possible, to make, to make it uh, the greatest destination, we've worked with many, many retailers, and in particular with many great restaurateurs, many of the greatest local operators, many of the greatest chefs. We've worked to them, with them, and they have curated a variety of restaurants, a variety of restaurants that are local, real, authentic, and indigenous to the city. They will create for everybody who comes a, a variety of, of everything that uh, the best that Washington, D.C. can offer. So I'd like to thank Fabio and Mar Maria Trabocci, Mike Isabella, Cathal Armstrong, Nick Stefanelli, Jennifer Carroll, Jamie Leeds, and so many more who are offering some of the most exciting cuisine in Washington. I also would like to thank all the retailers. Thank you to uh, Lisa Muscatine and Bradley Graham for opening Politics and Prose here. And, you know, I, I, as I said, I could go on and on, but thank you to all the others. Thank you also to our friends who are going to create the best hotels in town to our friends at Hilton, at Hyatt, and at Intercontinental. I am I'm a great fan of music, as some of you know, so I'm really, really delighted to welcome Seth Hurwitz and his great 6,000-seat, state-of-the-art anthem concert hall. Those guys uh, were at the concert yesterday. Uh, the Brindley Brothers Union Stage, the Pearl Street Warehouse, and so many more live music and entertainment venues. Uh, we're going to really be able to party through the night here. So I think it's fair today to say that Washington is embracing the wharf. It's embracing the design and infrastructure. 
It's embracing the open spaces and the great built environment and the reimagining of the river as an area for recreation and renewal. I would like to thank everybody, all 2,000 or 3,000 that have really helped inspire and empower this project and overcome the challenges and obstacles in the course of a whole decade of, of hard work. This is only the beginning. This weekend we're going to party. We're going to really celebrate. But starting Monday, starting Monday we go back to work again to make this the greatest neighborhood and then to start working on phase two. And if you, if you are excited about what's happening here in phase one, we're gonna astound you with phase two, or so we hope so. So thank you. In conclusion, I would like to introduce our deputy mayor, Brian Kenner, one of the great young leaders we have here in Washington. Deputy Mayor Kenner is pursuing urban renewal and preservation while managing responsible change. Brian has served as one of the youngest ever city managers for Tacoma Park, Maryland, before being recruited to serve as Deputy Mayor for Planning and Development for the District of Columbia. He not only oversees a 13 billion real estate portfolio, but he, has, he also brought a unique vision to his work based on providing residents and businesses top quality services in all areas of city oversight. I'm delighted to have uh, Brian here with us today. Welcome, Deputy Kenner. Thank you. Thank you, Amor. Uh, thank you for referring to me as young. I always appreciate that. Don't feel like that all the time. Um, good morning, everybody. Welcome, obviously, to, uh, to the Wharf Project. Um, I'm here to do probably two things. One is to uh, provide some thank yous uh, to many people, and then just a little commentary on what a transformative project uh, the Wharf is. So first to the thank yous. Uh, this project started off um, as an economic development project for the city. This was a previously city-owned site. And uh, as has been said a little bit um, earlier, throughout the years, uh, the ability for various administrations uh, to continue to see the vision for what this project is, uh, is, is impressive. Uh, and I think also speaks to uh, sort of the longevity and the good economic development um, opportunities that there are here in Washington, D.C. Uh, the deputy mayor's office in particular has been, I think, the primary steward uh, on the transactional side to seeing that this project uh, not only is completed, uh, but also meets many of the public policy goals uh, that we wanted to see with this project. As uh, some people know, the mayor says that I have three goals. I've got to make sure that I am focused and that my office is focused on affordable housing, tax revenue, and jobs. Every single initiative that we do in our office has to have one, if not two, if not three of those components. It is rare that we get projects that have all three. This is one of those. This is one of those. Some of the people in the deputy mayor's office and throughout D.C. government that have been instrumental in making sure that this is a success. Uh, first, uh, some of the DEMPED leadership folks. Uh, Sarosh Opadwala, our director of real estate development, Andrew Trueblood, my chief of staff, Karima Woods, our director of business development. Uh, I'm going to pause on this next one, which is Susan Longstreet, uh, my general counsel in, ge in the deputy mayor's office. Without Susan's uh, work, she told me this morning that she worked on this the first day that she uh, worked in our office, which was about 10 years ago. And so uh, Susan's uh, involvement, leadership, and drive to making sure that we got here has been, uh, has been amazing. Uh, also want to recognize... Uh, sometimes uh, overlooked but should not be uh, folks in our office, some of the administrative people who have made sure that all the meetings, uh, we had some issues around uh, liquor licenses and some other things most recently, so we had to make sure those things were scheduled. Uh, Ingrid Wilson, Sandra Villarreal, Tracy Trebu in my office uh, have done an amazing job. Also want to uh, especially highlight Joe Lappin, uh, the project manager for the deputy mayor's office, uh, Jen Castor, also uh, in our general counsel's office in DEMPED. Uh, Matt Troy, a former uh, project manager in the deputy mayor's office who was a primary uh, project manager on the Wharf project for many years. DCRA Director Melinda Bowling, uh, Jeff Marushian from DDOT, Sam Zimbabwe and Amanda Stout from DDOT, uh, DHCD Director Polly Donaldson, DOES Director Odie Donald, 
DOH Director Laquan, Dr. Laquandra Nesbitt, and finally DPW Director Chris Shorter and Johnny Gaither. Again, all, um, it was really an all hands on deck to make sure that this project uh, was a success. So just a quick round of applause for all of those folks. Um, as I mentioned before, this project uh, is transformative, and uh, part of that transformation started with a vision. And, you know, that vision was born uh, really more than 12 years ago. Uh, I know there was already acknowledgement for former Mayor uh, Williams, who was a part of the Anacostia waterfront planning um, sort of thought process around this. And I also want to acknowledge the former Office of Planning Director, Andy Altman, who's also here uh, as well, for his vision around what we see today. We have public spaces for outdoor activities along our waterfront. We have abundant retail opportunities and dining options. We have quality housing for all. There's a 20% of all of the residential units here uh, are affordable, uh, which is something that I think uh, we certainly don't want to overlook and something that we made a priority. And the last part is improved connections to our, to our iconic landmarks. Uh, iconic is that one of those words that sometimes um, is not thrown around uh, very often. And for projects like this, this truly is one of DC's, not only Washington DC's, not only our region, but a national and international iconic landmark for us. This is a destination point for people who are coming to Washington DC, people who live in Washington DC, or people who are thinking about Washington, D.C. This adds another element for people to think about when they come to Washington. Uh, I personally lived uh, in southwest D.C. 20 years ago at 6th and I Southwest, and I remember the old waterfront, uh, as many people here do. And to be able to see the vision and to see it come to life here uh, is truly amazing. Uh, with that, I know that there's lots of other great speakers that are going to be speaking um, today. Again, I want to thank Monty Hoffman and the entire Hoffman development team uh, for really persevering, persevering 10 years, 11 years is a long time to stay with a single project, so we appreciate their perseverance. And finally, uh, obviously, to Mayor Bowser. Uh, in many ways, uh, projects like this, some of the, ho some of the hardest and heaviest lifts uh, come right before you're about to open. And I know that it's through uh, the mayor's leadership and working uh, on projects like this that we have been able to make it a success. So thank you all very much, and uh, just like you, I look forward uh, to all the things that will come in the future. Thank you.
please welcome back to the stage, Amer Hamor. What an outstanding performance. It's, it's, it's very, very hard to take the stage after the stars in the making, I, I don't know. Uh, thank you, thank you to the Children's Chorus of Washington and the Duke Ellington School. It's now my, thank you. It's now my great privilege to introduce Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton. Congresswoman Norton has strong, committed ties to this, her birthplace city, and to a neighborhood that has always been close to her heart. In a lifelong career of public service and leadership, Congresswoman Norton has never forgotten the historical importance of Washington's great Southwest waterfront. Just as Congresswoman Wharton has fought to bring the Department of Homeland Security to DC, she also understood how the wharf could reinvigorate the community, add jobs and revenue, and provide another star attraction to the capital city. Congresswoman Norton has so many achievements. Uh, she'll be, she will always be remembered for her role in advancing civil rights and women's rights. And she will always be remembered for her dedication to growing this capital city. From the Southeast Federal Center to the Washington Navy Yard to Noma and now to the wharf, Congresswoman Norton has redrawn and expanded the streetscape of Washington. We are so proud to have her join us this morning as we celebrate the opening of the wharf. Congresswoman Norton. Thank you, Amir. I guess you were my voice of God for the day. <laughs> uh, our public officials on, on the stage, uh, Mayor Bowser, council, uh, council men for this ward, uh, Charles Allen. Actually, uh, almost all of them are here because they refuse to let this part of Washington be for Southwest alone. This is transformative, not only of this neighborhood, but of our city. So I want to thank all the public officials who have come today. I want to thank Andy Litsky, who was the ANC, it was the ANC chair who guided, uh, who guided us through uh, the must be thousand and one meetings that I'm so pleased that Monty and Amir had with the community so that the community feels fully embraced by this uh, extraordinary site. Um, all of us, surely, who saw this site at any point in our lifetime have to marvel at what uh, Monty and PNF, PNF uh, Hoffman and Amor have done with this site. I mean, the first there was a groundbreaking, then there was a topping off, and now we are told that this is the completion of what is unceremoniously called phase one. Uh, well, <laughs> if this is phase one, people, uh, imagine what this site is going to look like when it is finished. It looks virtually finished right now to so many of us who saw it from the beginning. Of course, in, in, in place of phase one, I prefer what it was called in the 1850s when Richard Holmes, my great-grandfather, walked off a slave plantation and came to the wharf. I appreciate that uh, Monty has not only preserved the original name of this historic site, but he has preserved one of the, the district's oldest neighborhoods, Southwest Washington. Um, what PM, PM Hoffman has done is create not just a new neighborhood, uh, actually it is a reinvigorated neighborhood but he's added something else, and that is a new destination here in the District of Columbia. Uh, and that DC needed both the transformed neighborhood and it always needs new destinations because we are a tourist e economy. Uh, and this is an incredibly valuable destination because just a few blocks up is the mall where literally millions of visitors come every single year 
and what they will see is a virtual invitation uh, from the mall to come here to have some fun and, by the way, to see another D.C. neighborhood. Uh, because for all of its glimmer, the Wharf remains a home, uh, a hometown neighborhood in, in the District of Columbia. Uh, for me, uh, this site is something of a miracle because I saw it when it was only on paper. And it was called the Southwest Water Redevelopment Act. That's not very glamorous. <laughs> and it doesn't look anything like what we see here. Making a bill happen is what Monty and Amer have done. Uh, uh, what they have done, and I hope we appreciate, uh, is so comprehensive and, and complicated uh, that it makes pale what I had to do to get this bill out of the Congress. Actually, I had to write two bills because this isn't just about a piece of land the way Noma, another of my sites, was. This is about land and water and you needed a bill for land, and you needed a bill for water. It tells you, it tells you something about the utter utility of, of this site. Uh, there was nothing more tor torturous. The only thing more torturous uh, for getting uh, one mill through Congress is getting two bills through Congress. <laughs> and, and I will concede to that. Uh, actually, this was the hardest bill I've ever gotten through Congress. Uh, and I should say that except for statehood, it's probably going to be the hardest ever, but we're going to get statehood too, just like if we got Southwest Waterfront. <laughs> who, cre who did the real work? Who created the miracle? Are uh, the two men you see on, on the stage. Um, all that it is involved, including <laughs> making sure they st stayed under the height limit to show you the extent to which the federal government is, is in our business. The wharf matches the other site that we took to Congress, and that, of course, is Capitol Riverfront and Yards Park. Uh, the D.C., um, with the opening of this site, D.C. is becoming a true waterfront community. On the southeast side, on the southwest side, nothing can Stop us now, except the rain. Thanks for coming. Please welcome back to the stage, Monty Hoffman. Thank you, God. You're welcome. Um, so uh, I, um, we're getting uh, near the finale here. I just want to uh, mention, I, I I want to mention a couple of people at, with P. and Hoffman uh, quickly. We are like a big family, and uh, I can't name everyone, so I'm just going to stick, uh, leave it, uh, limit it uh, to the principals. Uh, Mark Durigan, who's the president of uh, P. and Hoffman, his, his, his leadership and uh, ability to uh, negotiate uh, the, all the multitude of leases. You're looking at about 53 entities, I think that's what it is, Amir, just in phase one alone, all that structure uh, through him. Um, and he's been with me, uh, or we've been together over 10 years. Um, Tom Eichler, who heads our capital uh, investments and uh, uh, the financing, as you can imagine, for a project of this scale and the different uses is incredibly complex. And uh, he is the one who uh, structures all of that. Um, Paul Nasetta, who heads uh, operations. And uh, we've been friends for about 30 plus years, and he's been, uh, uh, we've been together uh, with the company uh, over probably 15 years. Uh, uh, thereabouts, uh, Sean Seaman, uh, who uh, was up here a little bit ago, uh, executive director, managing it. And uh, I want to mention Michelle Giannini, who is executive uh, vice president of all our sales market. She's been with me 17 years. We are like a, uh, just a, that's a big family. Sometimes we fight, family fights, but it's like a family. And I want to mention uh, a call out to Pete Nazarod, who is my old partner. And he came in the last couple of years. He says, hey, I'm, I'm getting bored. Uh, what, do you have anything for me? And I said, yeah, I, I think I do. Um, in any event, 
Um, I wanted, I'd like to announce the mayor. Uh, before uh, Mayor Bowser uh, became mayor, she was a council member for Ward 4. And I remember right when she became council member, she had an interest in the wharf. And this was uh, about 10 years ago, I think. And uh, so she would actually even come over and say, hey, tell me about the wharf. And I said, aren't you lost? You're, you know. And she says, well, I, I just want to know more about it. And thank goodness for that preparation helped her when she became uh, chairman of economic development for council because that prepared her for getting some of these bills through that we needed. She was up to speed very quickly because of that uh, care and attention she showed early on. And then uh, today, as mayor, uh, I couldn't ask for uh, better executive support from this city. It's just, been, uh, it's just been breathtaking, the amount of help that we've received from the city. This is a truly public-private partnership, and its success is a large part due to Mayor Bowser. And with that, I'd like to give a great round of applause for Mayor Bowser. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. And it is indeed my pleasure to welcome you to the District Wharf. It's so many people to thank, and they have uh, been thanked in a large part, but I want to add my appreciation. I'm honored to be the seventh elected mayor of Washington, D.C. You've heard about the sixth mayor, the fifth mayor, and the fourth mayor. So let me add my thanks to uh, Mayor Gray, Mayor Fenty, and Mayor Williams, who have all played a part in getting us here today. Let's give them a big round of applause. I want to acknowledge and thank my congresswoman. She just told me the, er, er, the other day that, you know what I do down here, Bowser? I get land for the District of Columbia. And we want to thank you for getting this land for us. And we have some more to work on, too. So thank you, Congresswoman. Uh, to Monty Hoffman and Madison Marquette, thank you for your persistence, your vision, and your investment. When we look at this beautiful waterfront, we know that it's top quality. When we think about the tenants, both commercial and retailers who are coming here, we know that they will bring a diversity of options. When we think about all the wonderful residents who will be moving here, we know that they will bring life to this waterfront and this part of our waterfront, and we are so excited for that. Deputy Mayor Kenner and my great team, uh, he has acknowledged all of the agency directors and staff who have been a part of making sure we could get to opening day today. I wanted to mention just a few numbers. First of all, when you look at these residences, you see uh, and you will see almost one in four of them are at below market rates. One in four affordable housing units and more to come. I recognize my friend Kwame Brown in the audience. Uh, when I joined the council, he was the chair of the Economic Development Committee and really insisted on affordable housing and jobs for DC residents. So thank you, council member, for all of your work. <laughs> to all the members of the council, I think there have probably been 10 or 11 votes at City Hall to make sure we could get here today. Another number that's important, 6,000 permanent jobs, 1,150 construction jobs on phase one. A uh, thousand of those jobs were in phase one, I should say, and half of those jobs, more, more than 50%, went to D.C. residents, and that is a hugely important. The Wharf has also invested $1 million in workforce training, $1 million to help more D.C. residents find their pathway to the middle class. It is also important to call out that 35% of contracting dollars will be uh, with DC certified business enterprises. What is so important for us all to know is that we're partners in this and I should mention the taxpayers of Washington DC and I want to thank you Jack Evans for your work to make sure one of the biggest tiffs uh, in our city's history happened right here. It was the city's investment with the city's land and with fantastic partners that brings us here today. Uh, we should all be very proud and if I had the opportunity recently to fly into uh, my hometown uh, and I've seen and 
and many of you have made that approach dozens of times. And what was different this time is while I saw the monuments and I saw the bridges, this time I saw the wharf coming out of our river. And I saw the possibilities of connecting all points along the Potomac River and into the Anacostia. This is one of the best times in the history of our city. We've never been stronger, and now we have the ability to make the types of investments to make sure all D.C. residents are participating in that progress. The wharf is an exemplary, exemplary project and an example of how government, the private sector can work together to enhance a neighborhood. To the people of Ward 6 and the Southwest Waterfront, thank you for your persistence and your help in planning to make sure that this project will enhance this great neighborhood. It is true, when I became a council member, I sat down uh, with Monty early on and he said, well, he did say, what are you doing here? You literally live the farthest away from the site of any member of the council. But what, is, what we should all be reminded of is this is our waterfront, our destination, and we couldn't be more proud. Congratulations to all involved. Welcome to the front of the stage, Monty Hoffman, Amir Hamor, Mayor Bowser, Congresswoman Norton, Councilman Allen, and Deputy Mayor Brian Kennard to officially open the wharf. I, I want to go off script for one second, and I have one thank you, and it's somebody that needs recognition. It's Bob Ruben Koenig, the director of the Community Association. Without him, there'd be no ponchos, there'd be no events like this at the wharf. So thank you, Bob. So after more than a decade of hard work and collaboration, we want you to join us in the tradition that we've created here at the Southwest Waterfront, which is fireworks. And we're going to count down from five, 
uh, please join us in welcoming and opening you to the wharf. Five, four, three, two, one. Thank <laughs> you.